crammed everything on here. Um, all the caps and stuff is kind of dirty, but this one works pretty good with the same test coil at about uh, 24 volts. So with this one, I'm using um, IRF 3205s, and those are pretty similar to the ones I used last. Just a little cheap, probably knockoffs, but they're 55 volts. 110 amp. The other ones were 100 volts, about 110 amp or so. So while these are like the Z44Ns, they're just a little slower, I guess, and they've got lower on resistance. And instead of my own step down GDT type deal, I just grabbed common wound line inductor or for a line filter, probably. Same thing here, this was just a single wound choke on a yellow core that was, I, I don't know where it came from. I just clipped it about halfway down and then tied those together, ran that to the positive rail. Have this common choke up here. The only thing about this particular setup was I needed uh, about 100 nanofarad on the drains to whereas the other one using the IRF P250 works fine with 6.8 even though I'm gonna probably bump that up again uh, you know I'm just grabbing random stuff here it seems to work pretty good um, you know I've got a 5k voltage divider just kind of set it once and leave it so I mean with the feedback seems like so long as you can pass a sine wave with enough juice to switch those fits you know which a lot of these seem to do no problem then it seems fine but I have this set at 24 volts So since it does take 30 volts, kind of makes me wonder if uh, you know similar FETs, 55 volt FETs, IRFZ 44Ns would take about 30 volt input. Like on this little guy, I haven't really drove that at 30 volts yet, but maybe about 26, but probably could take it. Maybe about 30 volts max is not bad. Uh, yeah, and you can, you know, I can run that output like that for a while without this heat sink getting hot. Uh, even though it doesn't have perfect switching, and that's pretty good output for uh, up to 30 volts, but even at 24 volts, I just happen to tune the primary to where it you know, comes out pretty decent, and that's just how it goes with this driver. So just yet again another one, probably going to throw it in a little box and um, just have it look a little better. You guys always been a champ, so 24 volts, not bad. Handles 26, all right. So again, same circuit, cool circuit. Um, so you can see even with a small coal, coil works pretty good, so. It's pretty much the plan for these circuits. I'm not going to use a big coil like this. It'd be something smaller. You know, so here's another one. Um, got it. At, let's see. Turn it all the way up to 30. That's how I've got that one tuned. But it's acting funny right now because I keep forgetting this. This coil is 
pretty close to in tune with this coil uh, at the right times <laughs> given the arc loading see that one actually is spitting out some plasma from time to time depending on the loading so you see it's lighting up that LED too so gotta move that away yeah, it's just how I got this one set up and tuned now. Again, runs pretty good. So basically what I noticed given this setup, it just really like to discharge from the side much easier than it did from the top so basically what I could do is just add a little tiny breakout point here on the side and then leave the one on the top that sort of metaphorically adds like a safety spark gap basically you know since it always has a place to start discharging from the side then I don't really have that problem anymore it's a it's always pretty much a solid discharge so that's just how that is and I'm just going to leave it set up like that and again pretty impressive for only 30 volts and I can run this thing pretty much all kind of ways for a really long time before those tiny fets start heating that little heat sink up there too much and um, again not the quickest damn fets really low on resistance and that's pretty much all I needed to, to make this semi small I guess you could say. I guess over time I realized the main problems I had with this type of driver or this type of circuit was just that uh, really any time I use an interrupter like this on board I would just have to decouple it uh, particularly one of the pots here I would just have to decouple that to get rid of some you know strange ringing that would be going on and a lot of times by doing that you'll uh, get rid of a problem where you know by moving your hand too close or something like that starts throwing it out of whack I'm just grabbing random chokes to use and these are pretty much the only variables other than the MOSFETs. I'm not real sure what the trick is there. I mean you got a sinusoidal gate drive. As far as why you would get a fairly like a fairly long discharge from like 24 volts to where you know other typical drivers or even regular single MOSFET drivers won't do that at typically 24 volts. I still don't really know why. I'm not sure, uh, it's just what happens.